education. Unfortunately, simply throwing money at things doesn't make you the best at them. Our military, despite having the budget of the next 10 biggest spenders combined, is tremendously wasteful and is constantly used as a destabilizing force in regions we wish to dominate or exploit. We'll watch Jubilee in the cut system, videos after despite this. Despite occupying the world's number one spot for per capita expenditure, is routinely ranked the worst in the developed world in terms of access, efficiency, and effectiveness. While each of these topics deserves its own video, in this episode, we're going to focus on the US education system, why it's failing our students and teachers, and what we can do to fix it. Think back to your time in school. What do you remember? Early oh, mornings, yeah, I gotta do the long windowless hallways punctuated by locked doors, a strictly regimented schedule. Your school life was dictated by the authority of the teacher, who conditioned you with countless commands every day. Sit down, open your textbook to page 10, stop talking, line up. You were punished for speaking to classmates, making a joke, or coming in a single minute late. You had to get permission to use the restroom. Class started with a bell and ended with a bell. There's another kind of institution that follows a similar structure. It shouldn't come as a surprise that in the US, many of the same architects who designed our prisons also designed our schools. For many of us, school is an unpleasant memory. Sure, most of us had fun with friends we made in class, but that fun was exclusively outside of school hours. Odds are the memory of your education itself is pretty negative. Besides the experience of attending American school, Damn, the outcomes school. the system produces are also less than stellar. Despite our cultural obsession with getting American students to perform well in standardized testing, our scores fall squarely in the middle of the pack compared to other industrialized nations. This single-mindedness also has a more critical consequence. By demanding our teachers simply prepare students for testing rather than fostering an actually effective learning environment, we end up with students who not only forget everything they crammed into their heads immediately after taking the test, but who also lack the skills required to learn effectively. The students aren't the only ones suffering. The U.S. has exceptionally high teacher turnover due to low pay and long hours, and compounding the problem, a teacher shortage. So, to sum up the problem, our students are unhappy, perform poorly, and don't gain the critical skills they need. And our teachers are unhappy, overworked, and we don't have enough of them to meet a growing need. A country depends on its young people, those who will grow up and take the reins from the previous generations. So, why are we failing them so badly? Before we get into some potential solutions, we need to understand the three main problems plaguing the American education system. These three problems are- the Everything that he described, by the way, is just a consequence of, of, uh, like, it, it's, this, this is how schools are designed everywhere, for the record. Like, or maybe my experiences are in Turkey, so I, maybe it's different in, like, Europe, but I, I, I'm, I feel like this is how it is in Turkey, too. Um, maybe it's like, he just basically fucking described how schools are like, there are improvements to how schools can be. And there are like, there are identifiable, there are identifiable improvements that you can make to how your schooling system operates, uh, your public education system operates like treating teachers better as they do in Finland and Iceland and, and, you know, Scandinavian and Nordic countries, right? I'd see you to use um, FDS that actually w yields w better R results R for the D -D teachers or, and also better results for the students uh, overall. But, um, it's still like some of the stuff that he mentioned, like, you know, school being a prison like that, that has never changed and it won't change ever. the system's outdatedness, its underfunding, and its privatization. The lack of funding and the rapid privatization of the education system go hand in hand. So let's start there. When you All think right. of the average school- Oh my god. This person is so correct, by the way. Hold on, where is it? Cookie Dog says, I used to be so jealous of NA schools because you don't have to wear uniforms. Same, dude. Same. Same. I literally thought, like, it's the most- I was like, my life would be- my life would be better if I didn't have to wear a uniform is what I thought. When I was going to school, it was such a tiny thing. But like literally every fucking person that did not go to school in NA thought it was the sickest thing that you don't need to wear a uniform when you go to school. We had, we have casual Wednesdays or casual Fridays sometimes, I think. Of streaming, dude. It was either I casual Wednesdays, well Wednesdays or casual Fridays where you were allowed to wear your own like regular clothing. And... And oh my God, dude, it is such, it, it was insane freedom. Like it was insane freedom. I 
they police my body all throughout high school, basically a uniform. Yeah, so that's the thing. The reason why it exists, and I asked my dad one time, I was like, why the fuck can't, why the fuck do they have like, you know, this uniform shit? And it's because uh, uniforms are, are there because they don't want to show uh, the class difference for children who do not have the, the money to like get drip and shit like that and get bullied for it. It's for equity. My private school could turn casual days into fundraisers. It costs like a dollar to wear whatever. It's also gang prevention in some schools. Okay, we're talking about fucking turkey and shit, dude. Like, like I don't. Like, there's, there's no Bloods versus Crips in fucking Turkish uh, high school. Only after I went to college did I realize how much lack of drip holds you back. My parents would have saved so much money if all we had to wear every day was my, was a uniform. Well, the uniforms are expensive too, but in Turkey, dude, you want to know? You want to know what the fucking ugliest like public school uniform was for kids? I, I don't think this exists anymore, but uh, hold on, this shit was crazy, dude. Like, this is literally what Watch RP if kids you used to fucking wear. Do they buff. still wear this shit, guys? Really? Bro, this is... No, but this was, like, when I was... Uh, when I was in, when I was in, like, middle school, this is still a, a uniform the uniform oh really oh yeah okay mom is saying that you could still uh, add uh, class differentials differentiations by wearing like expensive collars or wearing like a satin one or some shit like that The East understands the importance of masculinity. Those are called smocks and they're adorable. Dude, this shit is so bad. Are you kidding me? I literally, I, I was so lucky that it was on its way out by the time I was uh, coming into uh, my uh, education. I just remember seeing it and being like, this is the goofiest shit. I hope I never had to wear that. Oh my God. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, what the fuck? I look like a goddamn pilgrim or some shit. You know, now, 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 uh, uh cottage core tiktok where is this unironically you know what i mean like now if you want to art ho this is what they're rocking on on tiktok all right and you're like oh shit she looks so good <laughs> uh cottage core that's this is a fucking Slant. fashion trend they still exist in the eastern part of turkey westerns are out of touch Show us what your uniform look like. I don't even know if I have. See how long Madison only goes status in him. Yeah, now like uh, if you go to Parsons, uh, for for like fucking, you know, fashion design or whatever, this is what you wear actually. Don't make fun of my taste in women, dude. That is art ho is my taste in women too. What the fuck are you talking about? Like. Every, every, every like genre of uh, every trendy, uh, thing that, uh, uh, people do on the internet, I am into cause I'm just such a fucking sucker. Okay. I am a total sucker. School, whether elementary, middle, or high school, you're generally thinking about a public institution. That is, a school that is federally funded and tasked with providing education to all people of the appropriate age in a given school district free of charge. 
Public schools have existed in the U.S. since before it officially became a country, but the first Board of Education was established in Massachusetts in the year 1837. Emo the girls. person spearheading the education initiative, Horace Mann, believed that public education was the best way to overcome poverty, bridge social teacher, gaps, and, and prepare young people to enter the workforce. The Federal Department Uniforms of Education was established 30 years later, with the goal of standardizing and helping to implement education to across the country. Dress. I grew up in work, Title I school leaders, the uniforms are strictly enforced on poor school neighborhoods, upper class neighborhoods where life families got to wear free dress. Oh yeah. What may be surprising to some is that private schools actually predate public schools in the US. As early as the 1660s, individual teachers were offering their services to young people and adults as a way to supplement their income. This private schooling often took place in the evenings, and was less structured than typical day school. By the beginning of the American Revolution, private schools had become pretty well established and were favored by those who could afford their fees. Fast forward to more modern times and the more you describe your type as just gay girls. Yes, bi girls rise up. And like with healthcare and infrastructure, we begin to see a problem with accelerating privatization. The practice of privatization is simple. I like it entails I, I don't, the handing I, guys, off of what guys, this is not even a joke. When I say this like I have no preference, uh it is literally the truth. I I I'm not even kidding. I just don't have a fucking preference. I literally Sorry. don't. I like I like all girls. Okay? That's it public responsibilities to privately owned companies. Since the 80s, there's been a consensus, a deeply flawed one, but a consensus nonetheless, that there's nothing the government can do that the private sector can't do better. The word better is doing some heavy lifting here. Private companies often get things done more quickly or with a greater profit, but what free market enthusiasts fail to realize is that the outcomes are incredibly damaging, as is the case with American healthcare, or extremely fragile, as evidenced by private infrastructure projects. Take the Texas power grid, for example. It's entirely deregulated. This allows them to cut costs and make a greater profit. It also sets them up for disaster, as we saw with the recent winter storm that completely knocked out the state's power and left millions stranded in freezing conditions. Of course, a crisis like this is considered an acceptable risk when there's a nice profit to be had. This free market logic has slowly seeped into the realm of education. Over the past couple of decades, various federal initiatives have provided parents the option of using federal funds to send their children to private schools, whether by providing so-called school choice vouchers or allowing for the possibility of school transfers, where students can move from low-performing schools to higher-performing private schools. This has led to a number of problems. The most obvious is that by spending federal money to incentivize parents to enroll their children in private school, they've robbed public schools of badly needed funding. Why spend money to move kids around when you could simply fund the schools that are designed to be funded by that money? Because of this practice, public schools face a what? vicious cycle. There's what? not enough money to pay teachers, so teachers leave, which leads to more students in each class, which overwhelms the remaining teachers. There's not enough money for school supplies or even basic school maintenance, which leads to unsafe learning environments. These problems compound over time, which makes the schools perform worse, which then suggests to the federal government that they're doing the right thing by incentivizing the move to private schools. Okay, but if the private schools perform better and the average parent can afford them, why not just abandon public schools? There are a few reasons, some innate to how private schools operate and some based on the responsibility of the federal government. First and foremost, Ugh. it has been long established that the state has a responsibility. Having to wear a tie every single day as a kid growing up is literally like dude having to wear a tie every single day as a kid growing up is like is just so bad it's so fucking horrible dude that shit felt drippy not for me dude not for me oh my god they made you wear a tie of course of course dude it's just so fucking bad dude Um, it's literally not even an issue. What the fuck? Dude, I think people that say it's literally not an issue are people that just don't have to wear it. Like, they've just never been forced to wear it, so. Responsibility to provide access to free education to every student. This is non-negotiable, at least for now. If hey, public yo, schools gaming, didn't exist, there Spages would be students left, who could not afford to go to private school. Since education is a right, this is unacceptable. So, for the time being, the federal government cannot reasonably get rid of public schools entirely. The other Thank issues you. stem from the private schools themselves. By their very nature, private schools are not beholden to any kind of governance when it comes to what is taught within their walls. All they have to do is provide proof that their education meets basic educational standards. 
This has led to an upsurge in what can be considered reactionary, or as the schools prefer, traditional education. What this means in essence is that most private schools skew intensely religious, conservative, and insular. It's Their true. student body is overwhelmingly white, Christian, and wealthy. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with a parent wanting their child to get a religious education. But the problem is, in the US, Christianity has been co-opted by conservatism. Gone are the days when people understood Jesus to be a brown communist from the Middle East, who railed against the rich and preached inclusion, decency, and the value of living humbly. Most American Christians have grafted the language of conservatism onto their faith. Homophobia, racism, unfettered free market economics, and a rabid hatred for anything that could be considered even remotely socialist. This is not by accident. The political right has adopted religious, patriotic- This is like Betsy DeVos, uh, the education, the ex-education secretary. This was what she literally did. Like, this was her bread and butter, right? Which is ironic because this was her bread and butter, and then it literally turned into her, her actual, like, government position. Uh, her family uh, played a fundamental role in, like, creating these psychotic Christian education uh, places and, like, destroyed Michigan public uh, schooling. So language in an attempt to secure a large and dedicated voting block, evangelicals, and it's worked. In modern private schools, and I should know, I attended one, it's not uncommon to see PragerU videos shown in class. It's not uncommon to see economics Wait, classes that- I always thought that this was a joke, but like whenever people fucking send me, whenever people say like, my teachers played PragerU in the class, or my teachers played fucking, what's that, uh, what's that guy, the, the Christian economics guy who's like, Oh, are you in debt? Only well, you know, shot. pray the debt away and uh, stop having debt, dumbass. What's the Christian guy? Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey. They like actually play Dave Ramsey. That espouse the suicidal free market ideology of Friedman and Rand. History classes portray the US as the good guy in every conflict, including those where we were clearly in the wrong. Today's supposedly Christian education would not be recognized as such by the Jesus of the Bible. Instead, it's a new religion, the religion of free market conservatism. It shouldn't come as a surprise that those in power are doing their best to get more students enrolled in private school. Indoctrinating them into the cult of capitalism while they're young is the only way they can produce more pro- They played Steven Crowder in your sister's high school science class to what? Portray what happens when you uh, have brain damage or something? Like, what, what do you mean? Like, wh why would Steven Crowder ever be shown to show you, like, the lo what life would look like if you had no joy? Like, what's the fucking, what's the scientific reason to ever show Steven Crowder? Pro corporate voters. Heck, judging by what we've seen recently, it wouldn't come as a surprise to see public schools go the same way. The previous administration even suggested the creation of a commission for patriotic education a slate of pro-America, capitalist, imperialist propaganda. This disturbing trend towards privatization and capitalist indoctrination aside, what's perhaps the bigger problem with American education is the fact that the entire system is simply outdated. Remember the Massachusetts School Board? The one established in 1837? Well, that's when the standards for education were established. The stated goal was to educate young people. But if you take a look at how school was and is structured, it becomes more clear what education was actually for. Like it is today, the school day was strictly regimented. Teachers expected absolute obedience. The bell instructed students when the day began and ended. And punishment was doled out for any perceived non-compliance. If the students retained some basic arithmetic, great. But the real goal was to produce obedient, servile workers for the factories of the Industrial Revolution. Step onto a factory floor and what's expected? Obedience, focus, the ability to follow instructions for hours on end. The day even began and ended with a bell. School was then and remains today an instrument to instill discipline, to mass produce agreeable little cogs for the industrial machine. The standardization of schooling ensured these cogs were nice and uniform, easily replaceable and expendable. Today, nearly- Yes, back when kids could be uh, enterprising individuals early on, learn the importance of being able to, uh, learn the importance of a day, uh, day's hard work. But those disgusting communists came in and, uh, Destroyed our profit margins by discontinuing uh, child labor practices. Thank God in the United States of America, we were able to bring it back. After all, who else has those tiny little fingers to put through the sewing machines?
An adult finger does not work. It needs to be a child. We are losing out to Indonesia. We need to become more competitive in the marketplace. Two centuries later, factory labor is no longer the prime driver of the economy. No Companies banner still need on workers, my child but labor demand practices. a new set of skills. Young people entering the workforce are expected to be able to be flexible, creative, and on call at unreasonable hours. Even from a capitalist perspective, modern day schooling does not adequately prepare our students for the real world. Of course, preparing students for a lifetime of servitude should not be the goal of a good education. Let's examine the main issues in regards to outdatedness. Which of these two hypothetical classes sounds more applicable to real life, Latin or home economics? Guess which one is more commonly taught. If the goal of school is to prepare kids for the real world as we're meant to believe, we are doing our students a great disservice. Why don't we teach home economics classes? Why don't we teach high schoolers how to file taxes? What about useful things like basic first aid? We simply don't teach applicable skills. Then there's the fact that school curriculum just hasn't kept pace with advancements in modern technology. Basic computer classes are offered as electives, if at all. Even less common are video production, digital art, coding, web design, 3D modeling, and countless other modern skills. We're letting students down when we don't acquaint them with modern tools. As a personal anecdote, I have a younger sister who's shown a proclivity for drawing. Her school's art class, while led by a good teacher, doesn't even mention new digital techniques. Since I work creatively for a living, I took the liberty of teaching her a bit about digital art and apps like Procreate. Her oh, he's, is he going to do a hashtag ad here? Her skills Steven have improved more in the last two really months insulting. than in the previous two My years. And I'm no artist. I just told her about the app and suggested she watch some YouTube videos. Imagine if public schools had the funding for even a handful of art tablets or iPads. Kids could come out of middle school with skills they could translate into a rewarding career or hobby by the time they graduated from high school or college. Okay, so what are some solutions we could pursue? It's all well and good to say, teach better classes, but that only addresses part of the problem. The root cause of many of the issues our education system faces is that we simply don't have an incentive to teach our students. As with anything in America, if there's no financial incentive, nothing will change. The profit motive is the bottom line. Private schools have an incentive to at least prepare students for standardized testing, so that their parents will be happy and keep paying tens of thousands of dollars per year for tuition. But that education comes packaged with truly damaging ideology, so making private schools more accessible would not be a long-term solution, as those students would go on to pass even more ludicrous free market education reforms. Vocational schools are an option if we truly believe the only purpose of education should be to prepare students for the job market. There's a lot to be said for picking a trade and excelling in it. Electricians, welders, AC technicians, these are all critical roles in our society. One problem with vocational schools is that they typically come with a tuition, which can be a difficult burden for many families. Homeschooling is another option, though in the US, it often carries a similar connotation to private schools. Many homeschooled children come from very religious- My, my most like ML take, I guess, is that I believe in the uh, social cohesion that uh, the uh, common core curriculum creates. And I think public schooling is an absolute necessity for nation building. And that uh, you should abolish private education and reappropriate every single fucking dime of funds that you have back to building a robust and competitive education Arts system here, it's so uh, in the and form and of a like an actually well-developed uh, public education uh, structure acceptable are traditional with like painting. super cool it's extracurricular activities that you push uh, kids now. towards for, uh, the arts especially you know, uh, sports, just all, all manner of different things that you should be able to learn in, in any public school that you go to uh, anywhere around the country. I think that it is disastrous that we don't have that. If we did, America would truly be a country to, uh, to brag about, but we don't. We are, again, five months. a developing nation with a fucking Gucci belt on, okay? That's it. Oh, fuck you. Damn it. Someone clapped him. Not your average uh, African clapped him so quick. I'm going to give him a one day, though. Nice. We don't have classical high schools in Bosnia, MIC. There's a mechanical school, architecture school, economic school, agricultural school, etc. 
Stem lord tank incoming, but increase stem and trade funding plus business and accounting in public schools. Abolish private education. Make it harder to get into college for liberal arts to drive down demand. Could save people a lot of heartache. I disagree. I, I, I don't I, I don't agree with that at all. I think like I, I, I don't understand why people fucking shit on liberal arts uh, uh, super hard. It's so silly. Also, I love that the person knew that he was going to do a cringe stem lord take. So he gave a trigger warning. He's like, I'm going to be a cringe stem lord right now. backgrounds and are kept separate from other kids their age, which can lead to serious developmental issues. That being said, there are plenty of homeschooling programs that include on-location learning, such as in museums or on community college campuses. This offers a more diverse, hands-on experience for students and can provide an excellent learning environment depending on the child. Now that- The irony is that like a lot of the STEM Lord professions are, a lot of the STEM Lord professions are slowly but surely uh, getting like the availability of STEM Lord professions are, 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 are going to increasingly get smaller and smaller with artificial intelligence, computer, machine learning, and, and um, technology, uh, increasing productivity with automation. Uh, and then the liberal arts colleges are, or liberal arts majors are going to be the only like fucking majors out there that are not replaceable by machinery. You can say bad take all you want, and you can turn around and literally say there's always going to be people that need to do coding, which is certainly true, and there's always going to be a need for engineers that certainly need to create the machines or for upkeep. That's precisely why I said the availability is going to increase until uh, it, it withers away. There's less, there are, there's, there's going to be less need for uh, people when machines can uh, swap out their labor. My school got rid of our biotechnology program because they could no longer fund it. Them lawyers are like, fuck humanities and then wonder why they like why the like button they innocently create turns into a monster that destroys lives. I, I hope everyone As a STEM lord well. myself, most yeah, of us are salty at liberal arts because those classes are perceived to be easier. Untrue, by the way. I mean, I don't know. I think it's pretty fucking easy in comparison to... My liberal arts uh, education was a lot fucking easier than some of the classes I had to take that were like... Uh, on, on the STEM side. STEM lords unironically believe AI will be able to produce real art. <laughs> Ironically, they are Being the people that desperately need some humanities in their lives. STEM Lord. The reason why Jordan Peterson has a fucking career is because of the lack of liberal arts education within the curriculum of STEM Lords, okay? That's how you get sucked into a guy who, like, feeds you a little bit of fucking humanities from his, like, disastrously biased point of view. That's, the, that's how you get to the Ben Shabibos of the world, like... STEM Lord includes academia and national labs, dude. What does this poli-sci take about automation of STEM jobs? Not all of it, but when people are talking about STEM Lord uh, fields, they're talking in a lot of instances about like engineering and, and software development and computer science. I don't think that... Um, I, I, I don't... Look, I, I just don't think that like it should... Uh, I, I'm not going to throw uh, humanities away. And the people that are getting triggered by my, what, by my take on these uh, sorts of fields, slowly but surely withering away uh, with automation and, and uh, machine learning. Like, I still think STEM Lord degrees are incredibly useful. They provide a lot of utility. The fact that the only way that you can derive utility out of your major is by 
what the job opportunities are as a consequence of it is already really fucked up. Like, I wish we had, I wish we had good government programs for things like anthropological research, archaeology, shit like that, so that all of these professions were seen as like legitimate professions and legitimate fields. It would greatly improve humanity. Uh, same with the arts in, in general. I find it really ridiculous that uh, this is the only way. The only way that we can determine whether something is useful or not is like by how much money you can make uh, doing it. Um, and and also on top of that, like uh, I think our schools that uh, the only thing that's on good, only thing good is if you build with fingers and adapt to the new needs in the art world. The giant NFTs. <sighs> anyway. That right there is something we don't discuss enough in the U.S. Appropriate education depends on the child. We don't all learn the same way. Some students learn more quickly than others. Some require hands-on experience. Some learn simply I mean, by watching remember, or this listening. Is a leftist community. By creating one single standardized educational template, we're trying to standardize a whole spectrum of humanity, and that just doesn't work. There are some types of education, such as those found in Montessori schools, that try to foster a more diverse learning environment, allowing students to learn at different paces, and having Love students you, who grasp Adon subjects Hazel. more quickly work with those who are struggling. This allows more room for personal growth, but also fosters empathy and interpersonal skills. The jury is still out on whether Montessori schools are strictly better than more traditional education, but some studies seem to say pretty conclusively that their students fare better than those in standard schools. Overall, the moral of the story is that, like always, privatization is harming the majority in the pursuit of ever greater profits. The defunding of public schools has caused our country to slip further and further behind our peer nations. Our inability to keep up with the times has produced students who are woefully under-equipped to compete with students from other countries. Even from a capitalist perspective, it should be clear that our education system isn't working. And maybe that's the point. Maybe for the ruling class, it's desirable for the average American student to fail, so that they're forced to take the lower paying jobs that generate huge profits for their executives. Whether that's the case or not, I think it's safe to say that we cannot expect the federal government to solve the problem. For at least the past 40 years, they've been completely controlled by massive corporations, and will continue to trend towards suicidal free market non-solutions. Instead, I would suggest that education on the community level could be a worthwhile endeavor. If we expanded the idea of homeschooling to include other members of your community, we could create localized educational templates that not only allowed for more individualized expression, but also catered towards the needs and unique perspectives of each community. Local experts could teach small classes in their respective fields. Students could learn the history of their town, city, or region. Parents could build a network of trust where they could all help supervise or teach each other's children, which in turn would strengthen the community, fostering cooperation, friendship, and empathy. These communities could engage in sort of small-scale exchange programs, day- or week-long trips where students could experience the realities of different communities, which would provide them with worldly experience and a refreshing change of pace. We tend to get stuck in the notion that what we have now is the only possibility, whether that's in regards to healthcare, entire economic systems, or- Bad take, who the fuck's gonna spend time doing that? I mean, you can literally incentivize people to do anything. You offer additional subsidies to farmers that open up uh, for a day of learning in their community for the children in their community. Like one day a week, for example, something like that. I I'm so confused as to why people are like, that would never happen. Like it, it literally already happens for free in a lot of communities that people would uh, want uh, or, or people who take pride in what they do to uh, educate people in their community. Instead of funding our shit public schools, we should fund this with bigger chatters. For education, there are so many improvements we could make, so many possibilities worth exploring, and few are more important than how we teach the next generation. More and more often, young people are turning to alternative sources for their education. YouTube is a great one. I've learned a lot just from watching videos on topics I'm interested in. Another great place to learn about all sorts Skillshare. of interesting topics is CuriosityStream. Curiosity if you like today's video- Oh, I knew it. He's gonna say Skillshare, CuriosityStream, here comes the fucking hashtag ad. I mean, hey, listen. This dude, you can't monetize any of these videos, so he's gotta fucking do what he's gotta do, you know what I'm saying? Uh, why would you not want your community to be good, especially when you become an adult? Putting into your community where you live is so important. I agree.